Good afternoon, students, and welcome to today's lecture on everything you need to know to survive English class. I, of course, am your professor, Blake M. P.T. As today is the last class period before the July 4th holiday, I thought it would be appropriate at this juncture in our education to talk about the writing career of one of our nation's founding fathers and early great writers, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. As always, you may follow along in your textbook. Uh, it still is not available in the campus bookstore, I'm afraid, even though the last time I checked, this was still America, damn it. However, you may purchase the book either electronically or in print from Amazon.com. Please turn to page 64 and follow along with me. <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, born 1706, died 1790, is perhaps best known to modern Americans as the president on the $100 bill. The educated among us, of course, know that this is ludicrous, but not many people realize exactly how influential his work has been, not just in America, but all over the world. Franklin is the credited inventor of the rocking chair, bifocals, and the Franklin stove. He proved that electricity is caused by kites, established the first library, post office, fire department, and Chuck E. Cheese franchises in North America, and found time between mistresses to write a series of legendary and baffling aphorisms, many of which still confuse the hell out of us today. In his younger days, mostly Thursdays, Franklin composed his annual Poor Richard's Almanac, proving that even a genius sometimes makes embarrassing spelling errors. The book contained the usual farming, climate, and historical information, but Franklin also liked to use it to screw with people. For example, there is a story that says that Benjamin Franklin once, once published a death notice in the book regarding a rival of his, which came as quite a shock to the rival who, as near as he could tell, was presently alive. The rival fired off a harshly worded letter demanding a retraction, to which Franklin replied by denouncing the man for failing to accept the reality of his situation. This went on for some time until the rival actually died, at which point Franklin congratulated the man on finally conforming to the truth. Jerks on the internet consider it a triumph if they can trick you into looking at a picture of their junk, but 300 years ago, Benjamin Franklin had turned trolling into an art form. The most enduring contributions of Poor Richard's Almanac, however, are the dozens of proverbs Franklin coined. Many of them, in fact, are still misquoted in the common vernacular. Some of Franklin's more notable sayings include, A penny saved is two pence dear. Fish and visitors smell in three days. There are no pains without gains. He that lives upon hope has a fool for a lawyer. Who's the black private dick? Who's the sex machine with all the chicks? Hunger is the best pickle. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Redcoat Army. A stitch in time is probably the result of a Dalek incursion. As you can see, Franklin was a true polymath. <clears throat> Besides Poor Richards, Franklin's greatest success as a writer comes in the form of his autobiography, conveniently titled The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. Written sporadically over the last two decades of his life, Franklin's autobiography is now considered a masterpiece of the genre, which is to say that it is long. One of the unique things about Franklin's autobiography is that he not only tells the reader how much ass his life has kicked, but also offers advice and suggestions for how the reader can make their own lives kick an equivalent amount of ass. In an extended sequence, for instance, Franklin describes how he divided all qualities in which a person may improve into 13 categories. Temperance, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, truth, justice in the American way, moderation, cleanliness, tranquilizers, keeping it in his pants, and never parking over the line or in a handicapped space. He then created a little book in which he documented all of his sins. Spreading gossip, for instance, would be a sin against silence. Uh, forgetting his monthly bath could go against cleanliness. Insisting on buying the gold-plated HDMI cable when the cheap version works just as well was a mark against frugality, and so forth. Each week, he would try to achieve perfection in one of these categories, eventually using this method to become a flawless human being, provided you don't count all the mistresses. Some people would say this method is excessive, exhausting, or ludicrous. None of these people have their pictures on money. We all know, of course, that Franklin would go on to great success as a diplomat, statesman, and figure vaguely alluded to in rap music. His autobiography is still studied today, and is perhaps the most famous document in its uh, famous document about America in its early years, besides that time travel issue of Captain America, where he meets George Washington. 
To learn more about Mr. Franklin, may I recommend the highly historically accurate musical film 1776, in which Franklin plays a pivotal role and John Adams is played by TV's Mr. Feeney. Thank you all once again for joining me today. Don't forget you may follow me uh, at my office hours or on facebook.com slash BlakeMPT, on Twitter at BlakeMP, or on Instagram at BlakeMP25. I hope you all have a pleasant Independence Day and that Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum manage to save us all once again. And in the meantime, class, we will be back in session 